What is happening guys? Welcome back to another video and today we are taking a look at the MSI GE72 VR 17 inch gaming laptop. This was sent out by MSI for us to review. A little disclaimer, it is not a sponsored video. We do not get to keep the laptop. This is just for us to take a look at. It will be getting sent back to MSI. So I'm always going to be honest in all of my video reviews that I do. I had the opportunity to use this for a solid week, using this to render all of my videos for Computex 2017 and a further week afterwards for all of the other videos that I had to render. I also had some time to play some games while I was there and I had some free time in the night. So I really did did get to use this laptop to its full potential and test it out in many ways. So before we get into the review, let's take a look at some of the specs that this laptop has to offer. So we have the i7 7700K HQ processor with a GTX 1070 desktop grade GPU with eight gigabytes of DDR5 memory. And MSI is claiming that this is the lightest gaming notebook with a desktop grade GTX 1070 available on the the market weighing in at 2.7 kilograms included we do have eight gigabytes of ddr4 memory however this can be expanded up to 32 gigabytes if that is what you guys are after and this would certainly suit those people who use a lot of heavy rendering or 3d design and things like that the panel is an ips display so it's very true to color and this was most noticeable at computex when we took a lot of phone images and images which we needed to upload. I actually took my other laptop with me as well and we edited some images on that laptop and then later on when I looked at them on this laptop, they had a tinge of yellow to them, which was very, very annoying. So that's when the IPS display kicked in and we were able to notice the real world difference in color when editing photos. So this display is capable of 4K quality. However, that is only at 30 Hertz. So not probably the best for gaming. However, if you did want to use this laptop for gaming, it is capable of 1080p at 120 Hertz. That is 100 and 20 frames per second in your games, which is plenty of FPS to run all of the latest titles at some really high graphic settings. The panel is also a five millisecond response time, which obviously is good for gaming. And while we are talking about the panel, I just wanted to mention that we do have a little webcam up here, which is capable of 720p 30 FPS. Built inside, it does come preloaded with Windows and we have an M.2 SSD which is 256 gigabyte of capacity. So with it being the lightest 17 inch gaming notebook with a desktop grade GPU, I was able to lug this around with me all the time. I used it for rendering on the go, video editing when I had spare break here and there. And it was really quite a great experience using this laptop. I haven't actually had a gaming grade laptop before with a desktop grade GPU inside. Um, so it was quite a pleasant experience having that with me instead of lugging around a PC, which obviously I could not do overseas for Computex or just using my normal average everyday laptop, which just really doesn't work well, especially when you're editing video footage, which is 4K quality at 60 frames per second. That actually takes a long time to render. And the fact that we do have a desktop grade GPU inside means that I'm able to take advantage of the CUDA cores and I can actually use the GPU to help the CPU render out the video files. So it actually speeds up the progress a lot faster. Now, obviously this is not going to be as fast as say a 7700K CPU with a GTX 1070 in a desktop. However, for something that's mobile, light, quick to access on the go, definitely something that I would recommend and something that I was quite impressed with when we were at Computex in Taiwan. And internally, we do also have one 2.5 inch hard drive. Now, one great thing about this laptop, if any of you guys do have external monitors. This can actually take a HDMI input 
and a mini display port input. So you can actually run two external monitors and have three monitors side by side if you wanted to use surround or you wanted that extra monitor real estate for say video editing. You could have your editing program on one side, you can have YouTube or music on the other side or even have your editing screen on the other one. We do have one USB 3.1 type C. We also have two USB 3, one USB 2, we have an SD card reader on the side. We have a mic in and a headphone jack. And we also have for the audio, four two watt speakers and one three watt subwoofer. The dimensions of the laptop are as follows. We have the width at 419.9 millimeters, the depth, at 294 millimeters and the height at 34 millimeters. As I said before, the laptop does weigh in at 2.7 kilograms. So the majority of the body is actually made up of a brushed aluminum to give it that nice clean aesthetic design. So it makes it look really nice and it also performs just as well. It also uses a Synaptics trackpad which are really well known for making really high quality trackpads. While using this laptop, there was no stutter issues or anything. It glided nice and smooth and it picked up the touch of my finger really well on the screen. So as a lot of you may know, SteelSeries actually makes the keyboards in all of MSI's gaming laptops. And this is no different with this one. We have still series with the backlighting. We also have different color presets built into this. So if you use the function keys, you can go through all of the different color presets. We've got like flashing, fading, and we've also got some wave patterns. And you can also go into the MSI Dragon Center, which is already pre-installed on the laptop and actually customize the backlighting to your own desire. So when using this, this keypad, I actually found that there was some great key travel on these. They felt very, very tactile and clicky. However, there is a good dampening so that it's not making really loud noise. So for instance, when I'm doing a voiceover or anything like that, and I actually had to use the keyboard at the same time, I wasn't getting all of that feedback in the back of the audio. The keyboard also has anti-ghosting and end key rollover, which I'm sure a lot of you know what that means by now. But for those of you who don't, that means that when you press two keys simultaneously on the keyboard, it won't register a different key. So in the past, a lot of keyboards, when you press two keys, it'll register a different letter. So say when you're playing a game and you have key bindings, the key that you wanted to achieve wouldn't necessarily pop up, which actually caused problems. But now with this new technology enabled in these keyboards, we are getting the correct responses from the keys. The next function key that we have up the top here is MSI's Fan Boost. So say you're in the middle of a game, you're noticing your laptop's really hot or you're rendering, you can actually ramp up these fans to 100% load and that'll dissipate all of that heat out of the back dedicated exhaust sections. However, of course, this does add extra noise. Now I did test this feature out in one of my other videos, guys. So I'll link that up the top and in the description if you also wanted to watch that where I covered all of the basic features and I also tested out how loud this went. But for the video, we'll just turn it on for a second, show you guys what it can ramp up to. But I do encourage you guys to check out that other video as well. Now this is a gradual boost, so it doesn't ramp up to 100% straight away. So you'll notice the noise getting louder and louder over time. So as you can hear in the background, it is quite loud. This is running at 100% now. We've waited about a minute for it to ramp up to that 100% speed. So let's actually show you in some real world scenarios. We're actually going to render a file to get that CPU usage up, getting it nice and hot. And then we're going to enable the fan boost. So we'll see how much it actually cools it down by. Okay, so what I have here is Sony Vegas open. We're going to render out a 4K file at 60 frames per second. We're gonna watch the megahertz jump up. We're gonna watch the load jump up. Right now at stock, we're running at about 31 degrees on all cores. We're running at 3.7 gigahertz on the CPU. And we're going to render this out, watch the temperatures jump up, 
We'll let it render for a couple of minutes just to get it hot and stable and flat lined. And then we'll turn the fan boost on and we'll see how low the temperatures can get. So as you can see, we've been rendering for a bit. We've got the CPU cooking now. It is actually at 20% load, but that doesn't matter. We're here to show you the temperature differences. We've got 57 degrees on average across all the cores. Now we're going to enable this fan boost and we're going to actually see if we can drop that average down and try and stable it out at a lower temperature. So we'll let this run for a good minute or so and we'll come back. Okay guys, it's been about a minute. As you can hear in the background, the fan is nice and noisy, but we'll, if we have a look at the temperatures, you can see that the average temperature is around 52 degrees across all cores. So it's dropped from 57 to 52, that's a five degrees drop. Is it worth it for all that extra noise? Probably to get a quick cooling solution for the GPU and CPU. However, if you are gaming or trying to edit voice or anything like that, you probably don't want this type of noise in the background. I just saw it drop to 47 degrees there. So I'd say that it's dropped between five to 10 degrees. Now, while we are on the topic of cooling, MSI have included their Cooler Boost 4 technology inside with dedicated heat pipes to the GPU and the CPU and also dedicated fans for exhausting all of that air out the back of the laptop. Essentially, it's like having two different loops to cool each component of the laptop. So now that we've talked about the panel, we've talked about the keyboard, we've talked about the mouse trackpad, and we've also talked about the design, let's have a look at MSI's Dragon Center, see what features that has to offer, and then we'll turn it around. We'll have a look at the exhaust and intake ports underneath the laptop a bit closer, but before we get into some benchmarks. So within the Dragon Center, we do have MSI's app portal, which allows us to browse through some of our apps, which we will be using a lot. Now this laptop does come with a free year license of XSplit Gamecaster for any of you guys who do do streaming or gaming and you want to record your gameplay or stream it to say Twitch or YouTube. We do have GeForce Experience, of course, for our drivers to be updated. And we also have SteelSeries Engine 3, so we can customize all of the backlighting on the keyboard. You also have a system monitor, so you can check out the performance of your CPU and memory. You can look at your GPU. You can also see the temperatures down below here. And of course, you can monitor the RPM of the fan within the laptop. We do have the LED wizard, so you can go through the different profiles and customize the keyboard backlighting, as I said before, through this software. So you can customize different presets within the system tuner as well. So for instance, when you go into the music section, you can customize this. So say you're playing a game, you can actually set this to say shooter, or role play or anything like that. Or if you're listening to music, you can select the music option and you can also tweak your fans and you can play around with X boost and you can turn on VR or V off to make it VR ready. Okay, now that we've had a look at that, let's actually take a look at the backside of the laptop and we'll show you guys where the exhaust comes out and where the intake is. So at the back of the laptop, we do have two dedicated exhaust points, one for the CPU, one for the GPU. This is where all of the hot air will be exhausted out. So it's going away from you. So you're not receiving any of the heat coming towards you, which is really good, unless it's winter, of course, and you want to keep warm. But I do like how they have the dedicated sections for the GPU and the CPU. Now, one thing I need you guys to keep in mind is here is the intake on the bottom. We do have the feet, which do bring it off the ground, probably five millimeters. Now that does allow for air to vent in. However, if you are gaming or using your CPU and GPU and putting load on it, then I would 100% recommend that you do not put this on a blanket because a blanket would choke all of this air intake. So therefore you're going to be choking the laptop internals and therefore just adding more heat to the system. Okay guys, now that we've taken a look at the laptop as a whole, let's actually run it through some benchmarks and see how it performs. And we can also compare it to the MSI GT72 VR laptop, which I did do a video on earlier. And they do have very similar specs guys. So you guys can 
can choose between the two which one you like better. Okay guys, so our first test, we will be running a Heaven benchmark and we'll see what type of frame rates we are able to achieve with these settings. We do not have DirectX 12 on this. Unfortunately, DirectX 11 is as high as we can go, so we'll have to use that. We're going to keep the resampling and everything off and disabled anti-aliasing off and we'll run with these custom settings we have set it to ultra so we'll see what this laptop is able to achieve so as you can see there we did score 134 fps on average giving us a score of 3377 134 fps is 100 percent quite capable of playing the latest games with no stutters or issues and please keep in mind that this was on ultra settings so let's go ahead and we'll benchmark a couple of games so as you can see there through our benchmark of Rainbow Six Siege, we scored about an average of 150 FPS across the board. So we'll go into one more game, Battlefield 1, we'll check that out, and then we'll come back and I'll tell you guys my thoughts about this gaming laptop. So there we have it guys, some pretty solid benchmarking results with Battlefield 1 being a constant 120 FPS. Now this was capped because of that 120 hertz refresh rate. If that refresh rate wasn't there, you would actually see it go even higher than that 120 hertz. So what you were seeing there was a full 120 FPS constant. So now that we've finished the benchmarks, I think that we can conclude that this is quite capable of playing the latest games, quite capable of rendering some 4K video with quite a breeze. And I just wanted to talk a little bit more about the laptop itself and what my personal thoughts are of this 17 inch gaming laptop. I quite like how around the screen it does have these rubber inserts up at the top and around the frame to stop the actual bezel and screen itself from hitting the keyboard down below. And I also like how it has rubber feet underneath to stop it slipping out of place. And the screen feels nice and rigid. It's not like the previous one that we reviewed where there was a bit more flex in that one. This one is definitely a lot more more sturdier in design. Personally, I really did like using this laptop while I was overseas, made editing a breeze, and I'm very happy that I was able to take this. It was lightweight, portable, and I could take it wherever I want and edit on the go. So I did a bit of research. This laptop is exclusive to JB Hi-Fi. They have it listed for 3,499 Australian dollars. I do think that that price is a bit steep for this grade of laptop. I would have liked to have seen it late 2000s to $3,000. I think that that's a much better price point for this type of laptop with these types of specs. It is high end, but I don't think it's worth that $3,500. If you can find it anywhere for cheaper, by all means, definitely grab it. It is one that I'd certainly recommend. Anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed my MSI GE72 VR gaming laptop review. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below in the comments section, and I'll definitely get back to them with any answers that you are after. Also, remember to check out our GT72 VR gaming laptop review. It is a very similar specs to this, so you guys can compare the two and see which one you like. Personally, I like the GT72 VR laptop more than this one, as it offered a more screen real estate. It also had a higher response time on the panel, and it also had more refresh rate at that 4K resolution. Anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed. Remember to hit that subscribe button down below like and comment and perhaps watch the videos to the side i'm sure you'll get much enjoyment out of them thanks for watching and we'll see you all in the next one